He said this, Yahweh speaking to Ezekiel says, listen, son of man, these men who come to me on a regular basis, he says, they inquire of me, they, they, in other words, they petition me, they ask of me, he said, but they've got idols in their hearts. They put stumbling blocks of the crookedness before my face. He said, should I listen to them? Now think about it. This is not just that they've done error. This is not just saying they've walked in sin. They've set up idols in their hearts. So what is an idol? What is an idol? Well, it's more, more than one thing. An idol can be what we, then, what we say, this is him when it's not him. So first of all, let's realize one level, look, when they made the golden calf, they didn't say it was, you know, whatever, some pagan god. They said it was Yahweh. They said, here is Yahweh who brought you out of Egypt. So we have idols in our hearts when we say something is Yahweh when it ain't Yahweh. When we believe that him to be a certain way or approve of certain things or, be whatever, or even be against things he's not against, well, that's an idol. When we sit down and take strength out of something that really is not him, that we, we attribute to being him. Okay? That's one type of idol. Of course, other idols is when we look to things from other sources that we should only be going to him for. If you do that on a regular basis, that also could be an idol set up in your heart. When you turn to other things instead of turning to him for those things that you should be turning to him for. Is it making sense? So he says, look, those people that have these things set up in their hearts, and by the way, set up, I think, also helps us to understand that it didn't accidentally get there. They took it and they started, it's like taking stuff out of a box when you have a, like something that you have to put together that you have to build. You know, it doesn't matter what it is that you're building a, a, you know, a table or a desk or a chair or a bookcase or whatever, right? You take the parts out and you have to set it up, right? Most things you buy have to have a little bit of setup. You have to put it together and set it up. He says, well, these are people that took these things and put them in their heart and set it up in their heart as having authority. Okay, so you're setting stuff up in your heart as having authority, not just any authority, an authority like unto Yahweh. And you're going to listen to that authority as if you're listening to him. We do that act, oh, this is problem solving. We do that with teachers. When I said you should find one and submit and be following and, and that kind of thing, that doesn't mean that we then have that teacher become like unto Yahweh. Don't set a teacher up as an idol. Don't set friends and family members up as idols. Don't set books that are not canonized up as idols. Well, you're going to start getting your authority out of something other than this thing called the scriptures. That doesn't say there's no value in the other things. It's a matter of how you treat it. How do you treat it? Now, we're talking about something that's being treated now like an idol is treated. In other words, it is looked at as having authority and power in your life, and you turn to it when you have need. And so anything that you're doing that's not actually him is an idol. He says, look, those guys who are doing all that, should, should I let them inquire of me? Now, that's an interesting phrase even in itself. I'm just thinking about it now, the idea that when we inquire, he has to choose to let us or not. Did you ever think about that? We just go and sit there like, like somehow he's like our magic genie, right? We get on our knees and we go, okay, Father, I need this and that and this and that and this and that and this and that. No, we really, I think, need to be saying, Abba, I pray that you would let me petition you. Because he's even asking the question, should I let them inquire of me? So I'm guessing that there's a part of this process has to do with him letting you. And so maybe we ought to be making sure we've cleaned house a little bit before we go before him so that he'll want to let us inquire. You know, it's almost, in a sense... I'll use the example from the book of Esther. Esther knew that when she went to go inquire of the king, that when she was not called to come, that if he did not extend his scepter, he had not let her. Well, our king's very much like that. If we go to inquire before him, and we don't do it according to the way he wants us to come before him, he just doesn't have to let you come before him and inquire. Do you ever wonder why sometimes when you pray, it feels like it's getting stopped at the ceiling? Maybe there's something going on where he's not letting you. And that's a different prayer you may want to throw up. Abba, what am, I, 
What am I have going on in my life that I need to fix so that you will let me inquire of you? And it's probably why you're struggling with some of the things you're struggling with. He's trying to get your attention about something. And so rather than deal with it, you're asking him to fix it. And he's like, I'm trying to fix it by getting you to fix it. Because the problem is you, not me. <laughs> I mean, that's what he's looking down at you. He's like, look, you're the problem, not me. I'm trying to get your attention. Stop asking me to take something away when what you need to do is realize that I'm trying to get your attention about something and fix what I'm trying to get your attention about. Oh, but I don't want to do that. I don't want to actually deal with anything. I just want you to take away. Oh, and then we have these things that we know that we trip over, like the things that what Paul says, that which I don't want to do, I do, and that which I want to do, I don't do. Okay? So rather than actually deal with it, we want Abba just to take it away. Abba, take away that desire in me. Well, that's nothing wrong with asking that, but don't just rely on that. You make an effort to stop wanting that, whatever it is. See, we're just, it's so much easier if he would just take it away, isn't it? Oh, man, wait, Father, can you just take it away so I don't have to actually do anything? So I don't have to struggle with this thing. But you have to do is change your mind. In other words, the reason you struggle is because you still like it. You still want to. Or you struggle because you really still don't like it and you don't want to and he wants you to do it. So it's either something he wants you to do or wants you not to do. And you don't want to have to change the way you feel about it. You'd rather him just magically do it for you. But that's not character growth. That's not character growth. I mean, think of it this way. How many of you have watched the person take their oxygen out of their nose and put it down so they could smoke their cigarettes and then put it back in their nose? You've not seen that? Okay. Is there anything more crazy than that? But I've seen that. I've been, I've been, we've been walking in a public park with my family, and we sat down on the bench to eat some lunch we bought at a vendor or something, and sitting across from us, we watched the person take their oxygen off so they could smoke. But don't laugh at them. Don't laugh at them because that's you. That's you. You don't want to actually have to deal with your problem. You want to pretend it doesn't matter or ignore it, but really you'd rather just say, take, the, take this problem away from me so I don't have to deal with it. He says, these people who have the idols in their hearts and have put the stumbling block of their crookedness before my face. And I think part of that is when we say, well, he's okay with that when he's not okay with that, whatever the that is. We expect him to be okay with stuff and he looks down and is like, what, are you kidding me? Why would I be okay with that? That's not what I said to do. That's not how I said to handle it. That's not what I said to do, how to behave. And by the way, as parents, we do that with our children all the time. We look at the child and we're like, did I teach you to act like that? Is that what I told you to do? Why are you doing that? That's not what I said to do. I didn't teach you to behave like that. You know, you take them out in public and they embarrass you and you're like, and they look at you like, well, it should be okay for me to do what I just did. But it's not. And so you can't bend it and twist it to your own advantage so that now, it, now all of a sudden it's okay. If you like that, go back to Christianity. Everything's okay. <laughs> I mean, that's, you know, you are, there is a system out there that allows for all of that. Go there. If you want to be submissive to the real authority in the universe, well, then you're going to have to be okay with what he says and stop fighting and arguing with him all the time. 